Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. I continue bringing forward the articles that I truly believe everyone that follows the war in Ukraine should know about. And today we're going to be trying something new. And please answer in comments, what do you think about this? Is it something you would like to see more of or not? And we're going to be looking at Militarni. So Militarni is a very good uh, information source. It covers the situation in Ukraine. But it's also very heavily focused around the equipment and technology of this warfare. And I believe that it, it would be beneficial for my audience to have these videos that can be referenced about different types of equipment, different types of, uh, like today we're going to be covering the manufacturing process of the 155 millimeter shells. If it's so, please answer in comments. Uh, and we're going to go from here. But let's try it. So I'm going to narrate this uh, article over, over here. But I encourage you to visit Militarni to follow their articles. It is available in English. Link will be in the description. The production of shells, an overview of any manufacturing of shell body. Classic weapons, in particular artillery, remain one of the key advantage on the modern battlefield. Despite its technological advancements and the large-scale combat operations in Ukraine, we're hearing more about the advantage in numbers of shells being manufactured and fired. So it's important to understand what goes into the shell production. On my note myself, this is relevant for us because uh, sometimes we don't fully understand what it takes to scale the production of shells and why, for example, European Union is still struggling to do it and why it would be a problem to scale that production for uh, manufacturers. Coming back to the article. One of the aspects of ammunition manufacturing is the production of hulls for high explosives artillery, shells or mortar, mortar rounds. In addition, special chemicals are produced for primer chargers and explosive fuses. Each of them undergoes separate technological process, often produced at distinct production sites. To shed some light on this broad topic, here's an overview of the manufacturing process for shells and mines. Production of the shell body. Production of the shell body can be divided into the following stages. Stage 1. Production of special steel. Stage 2. Treatment of the workpiece under pressure. Stage 3. Machining of the workpiece. Let's consider the production of special steels, excluding the formation of billets by casting, by casting cast iron with their subsequent mach machining. Special steel has all the necessary specific properties. It is resistant to shock loads, so the projectile does not collapse from the action of the bouncer charge, which when triggered, throws in out of tens of kilometers. At the same time, the steel must be brittle and form fragments of the uh, required fraction, uh, self note on the explosion when the shell hits or explodes. To achieve the desired brittleness, this type of steel contains a high carbon content. While not for enhanced impact resistance and strength, it is allo alloyed with elements to meet specific requirements. For instance, adding manganese or chromium increases the flexibility, millability, and hardness of steel. We're not going to focus on special steel because this is a, almost a typical metallurgical process by which alloys made from um, iron are produced. The last stage is casting or rolling, and from there the material falls into the production of separate sections of the manufacturing of housing. Production process of shell body. It's important to mention from the outset that a comprehensive overview of the entire technological production process won't be provided here. Instead, we'll focus on examining the pre persistent examining and presenting the sequence by which artillery shell bodies are manufactured based on publicly available information. Workpiece production. After the press tour for journalists at the Scranton Army Ammunition Plant, which produces shell bodies for M795 155mm high explosive shells, the Vo uh, Voice of America News Ukrainian service reported that the round billet arrives in lengths of 6 meters and is subsequently cut into segments approximately 19 centimeters long. Let's delve into this process in more detail, starting with the delivery of the billet itself. The next step involves cutting the billet in the required size, which is calculated to include allowances for subsequent stages of manufacturing artillery shell bodies or mortar rounds. 
It would seem like a simple process of cutting with a saw or other tool, for example, tape saw or guillotine, but the shell body will have a weight error in the case of a minor mistake. Depending on the manufacturing of technological equipment used by customer, the billet may have a diff different configuration, such as square. It is produced by Kovatsky Central Plant, which is a part of Serbian Yugimport. The square billet has shown by the Army Recognition Group Defense Web TV journalists. If you're watching this video on YouTube, there are pictures that as I'm scrolling through the article. Forming the workpiece under pressure. The ingot needs to be heated in special furnaces at a temperature exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius, around 1,100 uh, 1, degrees Celsius to 1,250 degrees Celsius. For further processing, the temperature is necessary to reduce the resistance to the, the formation of the steel compared to its normal cold steel. This process can be either automated, carried out using robotic manipulators, or manual, such as during the Serbian production. Already heated the, to the required temperature, the ingot is moved to a mold manually or with the help of the robot. Here, the heated alloy is squeezed into the free space, forming a cup-shaped billet. The process of forming a cup from a heated workpiece takes place in several operations and moves between them manually or using a robot. In each of the operations, a certain preliminary internal and external surface of the lower part of the projectile is formed. After that, the workpiece uh, cools down and then is checked for defects, shells, cracks, irregularities, etc. before its current machining, uh, which ac accordingly includes all necessary tolerances for further stages of production. Machining can be carried out by both on numerical control machines, the CNC machines, or on conventional la late screws cutting machines. For example, machining of the exterior wall of the cup at the enterprise of Bosnia and Herzegovina is shown on the picture. The inner and outer profiles of the so-called cup after processing must correspond to the required measures. The inspection is carried out using the following tools. External diameters, reference, go-no-go -no -go gauges, and internal control stoppers at all stages of the manufacturing shells. For instance, here is a shown a cup check with a gauge bracket conducted uh, after a hot pressing and an internal diameter checks using specialized device to verify uniformity. Or here is the internal diameter monitoring of the cup after its machining. After that, the upper part of the artillery shell undergoes a taper formation. Depending on the required height and profile of the cone, this shaping process may involve multiple operations and various technologies. In both technologies that we consider here, the top part heats up first. Hot stamping, the first part, the first technology. The perform, the preform uh, with the heated upper part is then moved to the press where the taper is formed. Following that, the hydraulic press comes into action. After getting out of the press, the finished taper shape of the ingot is already visible. As you can see, the profile of the projectile does not yet resemble the final one, so heating operations can be repeated for its final uh, formation. Different manufacturers vary in the level of automation in their manufacturing process. For instance, in the US, robots are employed to handle their workpieces. Hot rotational extract, that's the second part, part technology. This taper forming technology is unique and requires more time and energy compared to hot stamping. Metal extraction during the rotation offers better characteristics owing to the uniform pressure applied to the workpiece, which also influence the balance of the future shell. After the formation of the nose part, the round profile of the projectile for beating is checked using an indicator placed on a special mag magnetic stand. Next step, heat treatment. Since pressure-treated steel has a non-uniform structure due to the redistribution of fibers according to the shape of the matrix and center punch, heat treatment is required to equalize them. 
To improve fragmentation reaction in the shell bodies, the shells are additionally hardened. That is, they are heated to required temperature, kept for a certain time to completely warm up, and then cooled by immersion in water. To avoid getting into further details, we recommend watching the first 3.5 minutes of the video of the USA military channel. Again, link will be in the description for this video as well. Final machining. After hardening, the full formed shell bodies will be uh, arrived for the last machining. They are machined in lathe uh, processing centers to achieve the required shape, roughness, etc. After that, usually beating is checked. Copper grommet formation. In the video, you can observe a copper or alloy grommet uh, on the outer surface of casing. The manufacturing process of these grommets can vary. For instance, in US facilities, they are often melted down. In an enterprise in Bosnia and Herzegovina, it is pressed in a special crimping press. We also observe what can happen at different stages at the enterprise in the USA. It is melted down on a cup, and in Bosnia and Herzegovina, it is pressed after the final machining. Next step is painting. After machining of the shell body is cleaned and painted, this usually happens on automated lines. For example, here is how painted at the facility of United States goes. Only the surface of the copper grommet uh, remains unpainted, since according to its functionality, it must contact the inner surface of the barrel. The production of projectiles in the United States involves marking at this stage. After drying, the bodies are packed in special container for transportation to the next stages of production, which in the case of American chain is located on another site. With this, we conclude the description of the production process for artillery shell bodies, and in the next stage, they are filled with explosives and along with other components are transformed into fully functional artillery ammunition. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, you're welcome to reference this video to everyone that you feel it's relevant to know how shells are produced. I hope this was a good insight in what the shell production entails. Again, tell me how do you think, is it relevant, is it not, it's an experiment. Subscribe to the channel if you like this, we'll try to do more. Love you all, Slavo Ukraini, and I'll see you guys next time.